tutorial I'll explain to you what HDR or High Dynamic Range Panoramas are and how you can create them. A normal panorama without HDR, such as this one, tends to have areas that are over or underexposed, or usually even both. Down here in this normal panorama, for example, you have an underexposed area where you can hardly see what's down here on the floor. It's all a little grey and blackish. And similarly up here, this is not where the panorama ends, it ends here. So there's something white which is actually a window. So you can't see the details up here because this is a tremendously overexposed area. Or simply compare these little windows down here. You can see some of them, these two and these two, are fairly overexposed. So you cannot see the details as well as you can see them in the less overexposed windows right here. This is what happens if you only take one picture of each angle with just one exposure level. So what HDR or High Dynamic Range does now is that it captures multiple photographs at different exposure levels and combines them to produce one photo that represents a broader tonal range. This means that I am taking each photo three times with three different exposure levels in order to give it more exposure down here where there's little natural light normal exposure here in the middle and less exposure where I already have a lot of natural light. Imagine HDR as a recreation of the photo of this door by choosing for each and every single area of the photo the very best of these three versions. So if you have a look at the floor for example there is little natural light so it will probably take the photo version where there's a lot of exposure so you can actually see the details down here. So this will be taken from the highly exposed photo whereas you can't see anything through this door. So for this part it will probably take the picture that has little exposure so you can actually see what's going on behind there. And if you have a look at the part up here you can actually see a lot of detail now because the picture is not overexposed so it will also take the part from here. Whereas here in the shade, you can't see the details anymore, so I would guess it would take this version for the wooden part. To sum it up, HDR is the combination of the best of each of these three photo versions. So it's a great way to equal out different light conditions within one scene. It's really good for indoor photography, for example, where you have natural light coming in through the windows, you have light bulbs, but then again you have really dark corners on the floor, for example. It's a great feature to really bring out the details in your indoor photography. A final HDR panorama would then look like this. As you can see, we have all of the areas of this panorama perfectly exposed. So right now, down here, we have a lot of light. Previously, this was only black and gray, and you couldn't see any details. Now you can see all of the details. You have plenty of light down here. You have perfect exposure here in the middle. You can see all of the details, whether dark or bright. You can even see the details in these previously overexposed windows here. And finally, you can even see some details up here which was previously tremendously overexposed. Okay, so now that you've seen this awesome panorama, you might be wondering how you can actually create this panorama. Here's how. It's actually almost the same procedure as creating a normal panorama. So you open 3D Vista Stitcher 4 and you click single panorama. Now instead of normal panorama, you choose standard HDR panorama and you again select the kind of lens that you were using when you were taking your photos. I was using a circular fisheye, so I select circular fisheye and now I have to select the photos that I want to stitch together. So in my case I created a folder with the HDR photos and here you can see now that every picture was taken three times. So these three are actually the exact same pictures, this with normal exposure, this with uh, little exposure and this one with a lot of exposure so this one is really bright and these three pictures later get combined into one picture. Luckily Stitcher 4 knows by its own which parts to take from which version so it automatically takes out the best of each of the photos so there's nothing that you have to know about exposure and which part comes out best in which version. 
So what I do is I select all of them, I click open, and the first thing that the program asks me is how many exposition steps did I take. It says three and that's actually correct, so I will leave it at that. And down here you can check whether you selected the right photos. Because you have three versions of each photo, you can get confused easily. So sometimes you accidentally could select a photo that belongs actually to the next panorama. So that's a great way to check whether you have included all of the photos necessary for your panorama and not anything else. I did, so I will click continue and I will click auto stitching. And let's have a look at the program's magic. There you go. This is my HDR panorama. Of course, I can now enhance the picture itself. So that's right here on the right hand side to make it a little more attractive. But as you can see, the stitching turned out perfectly. And now you have this area down here better exposed. And this one again has more detail. Um, Again, this is a low quality preview because I have not finally stitched my panorama. So I can edit the picture right here and then I will click stitch and save in order to finally save the final panorama. If you've liked the idea of HDR panoramas, then you should definitely have a look at our tutorial on Adaptive HDR. Adaptive HDR is a feature that we here at 3 Vista have recently developed and it takes HDR photography even one step further. So you should really make sure and check that out. Thanks for watching.